All right, does anyone got the hand up? Okay. We're we'll going to be talking about Julius Caesar, which is a middle of the career history for Shakespeare. Um, estimated written in 1598. First performance, 1599. The reason that this date is important. Did you get one, Brad? The reason that this date is important, 1599, is that this is likely the first play that was performed at the New Globe Theatre in London. Um, go over the main characters quickly. Julius Caesar is the great general who has the power to seize monarchical control of Rome. This is important because this sets up the action of the play. He returns from defeating the two sons of Pompey, a rebellious general, and the crowd is just going wild about Caesar. So he has the power to seize monarchical control in Rome, even though it's a republic. Brutus is his right-hand man, close friend of Caesar, who must decide to support Caesar or kill him to stop him from becoming a monarch. Calpurnia is the wife of Caesar. She has premonitions of his assassination, which go unheeded. And Portia is the wife of Brutus, who has similar premonitions about um, Brutus. She is very worried about what he's going to do. She knows that something's wrong. She knows that since he cannot admit to her all of his thoughts, all of his feelings about Caesar, um, something, something is amiss. Uh, two key characters, Mark Antony and Octavius Caesar, they are triumvirs who stand to gain power after Caesar's death. The main one you want to remember for this play is Mark Antony. Octavius uh, figures in certainly um, in gaining power later, but Mark Antony is the one for this play. He is, um, in a sense, he's the superstar of this play, as we'll come to see when we discuss rhetoric. And Cassius is a, a Roman senator. He's a key figure in turning Brutus against Julius Caesar. Um, essentially, the executive plot summary of the play is as follows. Brutus leads the assassination of Caesar because he believes it to be in the best interest of Rome, but loses favor with the crowd due to Antony's rhetoric and dies in the wake of ill portents, along with other conspirators. Um, so let's talk about the themes of this play. The first theme that you need to remember is honor, I'm sorry, I'm sorry power. Um, I left some spaces on your, yes, so write down names that I'm going to tell you that um, associate with each theme. The first one that we're going to talk about is power. The names to remember here are Julius, uh, so Julius Caesar, Brutus, Cassius, and Antony. Julius figures into this theme because he is the one who comes into the play, at the beginning of the play, with so much power that he could, he could seize control of Rome completely. Brutus figures into this theme because he has to decide whether he is going to assume, assume a certain amount of power himself to prevent Caesar from taking complete power. And Cassius figures into this because he tells Brutus that they need to take power to uh, prevent Caesar from becoming a monarch. He's the one key one in, fig in convincing Brutus that they must do this. Antony is important here um, because he stands to gain the most power um, after Caesar's death if he defeats those who overthrew him. Um, the common good is a, is a huge theme to remember here. Brutus decides to overthrow Caesar um, in the end for the common good. Um, at least that's what he says. There's doubt, excuse me, there's doubt whether um, this is in fact his reason. Cassius uses rhetoric to convince Brutus, so we're left to doubt whether Brutus does this for good intentions or for reasons of envy. Um, Cassius says, the problem, with my dear Brutus, is not with our stars, that is not with our destiny, but with ourselves, as in, we're too weak to take advantage of the opportunities. Caesar is taking advantage of the opportunities, and that's why he has power. Um, this is a play about premonitions and portents. Um, the names you want to remember here are the soothsayer, Calpurnia, Brutus, and Cassius. Soothsayer is the one who says the famous, beware the Ides of March. Um, Calpurnia, uh, which Caesar ignores. Calpurnia, Caesar's wife, likewise says, don't go to the Senate today. I had a dream that you're going to die. Um, Caesar goes to the Senate anyway, out of pride. Brutus sees Caesar's ghost and dies uh, and kills himself as a result of it as an ill portent. Cassius has two evil premonitions and he has a friend kill him as a result of it. Um, let's see, conspiracy. Brutus, Cassius, and Antony. Uh, Brutus and Cassius because they are the initial conspirators. Antony because he leads a conspiracy of his own 
against Brutus and Cassius once they have assumed power. Lastly, this is a play about rhetoric. The names you want to remember most here are Cassius and Antony. Cassius because he uses rhetoric to convince Brutus that they need to kill Caesar. He uses good reasons, but the power of, as you'll see when we read the play, comes in his speech. He's very, uh, very convincing to Brutus. But the real star here is Antony. Um, everyone, I'm sure, has heard friends, Romans, countrymen, but we don't think of it in terms of being the lead-in to the greatest crowd turning um, in, in theater, really. Um, the crowd is all in favor of Brutus. He has convinced them that it was the right thing to kill Caesar, that Caesar was too ambitious. Antony comes in and says, right, right, Brutus was an honorable man, I'm sure. He did this for good reasons. And then he proceeds to single-handedly turn all of Rome against Brutus and Cassius without making it seem that he does so. The end. All right.